Alrighty people, you may have uh, been wondering where I've been and what I've been up to. Um, there are at least two different things that uh, have to be addressed before I start making a lot of YouTube videos and things go back to normal on YouTube. I sometimes wonder why I give a shit about YouTube, you know. I really do. I've got enough emotional circuses, well, you know, not emotional circuses, but enough shit going down in my personal life um, to warrant <laughs> worrying about any bullshit happening on YouTube um, and quite frankly I don't need the social interaction in fact while fixing this house I didn't venture out in public except to go to the hardware store for months at a time even other times you know don't venture out for a couple of weeks into public because I don't need to and I don't really need the social interaction that most people crave and I sure as hell don't need the drama. I don't know how some women crave drama in their life. <coughs> it's beyond me. But anyway, um, yes, my grandmother did die. Um, eight days after my grandfather died. In between that, I had a wisdom tooth pulled out. And now one of my cousins is in hospital with some sort of heart problems, racing heart, which I think has been brought on by the stress of who are losing both the grandparents. As I said, how the fuck anyone needs more drama in their life, I don't know. Uh, how they could even crave drama is beyond me. Um, but the one thing that has been going good has been my job has sort of uh, gone from, I can only guarantee you 25 hours a week to probably usually working about 35 hours a week. And uh, as a result, I have bought a little bit more silver and well started buying a bit of gold and probably should stop doing that and just start paying the mortgage off a bit more um, yeah but things have been good I've gone from four days a week to six days a week uh, I was there today a um, few of these days I only go there just to feed them and piss around with a couple of other things a bit of maintenance or whatever and that's about it but uh, but yeah you know I'm getting plenty of hours and plenty of money as a result, so that is one thing that is actually working well um, in life at the moment. I've been stuffing around with said box thorns. <laughs> Fuck these plants. Fucking curse. It's. <laughs> look, you look at the density of this shit, you know? That shit should burn, right? You think it should burn? I've got blackberry patch down there, which I killed off. Um, lit it up, woof, off she goes, just goes like hell. It's less dense than that. The bits of the blackberry, like your stems, are thicker. And as I said, less dense than that. And it goes up like burning cardboard. It's just woof, it's just gone. This shit is unbelievable. You have to actually make a little fire underneath it, you know, a bit of newspaper and splash a little bit of diesel on the newspaper and then some more diesel up into the plant and then, you know, put pine on top of the newspaper and light it up if you can get the damn match to light in the wind and then, uh, you know, it just watch as it slowly starts to burn it and then you've got to keep feeding it with these, like, bean tins full of diesel over and over and, uh, you know, you throw flipping 10 litres of diesel on a plant, you know, it's like more than two gallons of diesel, you know, and it's just... Somebody once told me that it's good having boxhorn around my house because then it means that, uh, you know, boxhorn acts as a fire break. I know what they mean. This shit will not burn on its own. It's an incredibly pain in the ass plant. But anyway, we're forging ahead. Um, it's sort of rained once or twice, and I'm hoping to get some done this afternoon. And my father and I got some done yesterday afternoon. And I'll just walk down and I'll show you that. Um, Give us a sec here. Here's some I actually... Oh, that one there was petrol. Uh, this one was actually lighting the dry grass underneath it. Petrol's pretty useless. You can throw it over, and generally speaking, when you light it after throwing over petrol, she goes, whoop And then the petrol burns off, and then it goes out. No shit. I went and bought a blowtorch. 
This thing throws a flame 80 centimetres long. That's right, about four and a half inches short of a yard long. It takes seven kilos, which I think is about know, like 15 pounds of gas per hour. Per hour. That's how large this blowtorch is. It's a hell of a unit. $275. But all it'll do is just singe the base like so and won't really light the entire plant. <laughs> Essentially I bought this blowtorch and it's doing nothing. Uh, but this year I've just clipped all this with a lobster. It won't burn all this stuff here. All this stuff there, you know, as thick as my finger or whatever, not going to burn it. Um, and you've got to throw diesel in to burn all the prickles out there. Um, but I've just lopped some of this off, as you might be able to see. All the little white dots where I've lopped it off. Um, but yeah, that's some of what we done last night. And now hopefully we can continue on. But yeah, that's right, all these dry prickles that are just as dry as dry actually need diesel to keep burning. I know, it's ridiculous. Anyway, um, I don't know if there's much more I was going to tell you, but it gives us a bit of a update as to, well, you guys, an update as to uh, what's going on. When my stress levels alleviate a little bit, I shall probably address a few of the issues on YouTube and essentially come back to YouTube. But uh, I tend to ignore my emotions because they've given me nothing but shit over the years. Um, but I'm still affected by stress. I always seem to be the one who's reading the eulogy. I read my uncle's eulogy at his funeral and I read both of the eulogies for my grandparents. Purely because I'm the one who sits there with a straight face while everybody else can barely hold their notes and talk. As I've said, I'm rather unemotional because I fail to see how emotions assist me in my life. Trouble with some of this box thorn here. It's all green in the middle. So that one I had that's the overhead sprayer, I didn't quite get into overhead. But some of the stuff we're burning up in line with the green stuff. So then I'll be able to sort of cut into that or, well, poison that or chop it off at ground level. But uh, <laughs> it took more than half an hour just to do this here and this patch here. And we've still got three acres left. So, you know, and I don't think I can do it in the winter because it's hard enough to get it to burn when it's dry. Um, so I think it'll be something I'll do a lot of next spring. As I said, it's such a bloody resilient plant. I mean, some of this, doing this bullshit now, all coming back on the stems. I've killed the outer layer, and then some of the inner ones go all fuzzy on the stems. Now, some of them are doing that, and... The more I look, the more I find it doing that, but tell you what, you know, if you want a hardy plant, African box thorns it, but it also spreads like a bloody disease, this thing. Anyway, that's about it, and I'll leave you with that.